Greetings friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Alicia and in today's video, I'm taking you through a pantry fridge clean out, showing you different meals that I am making with the ingredients I already have on hand. So let's get right into the video. All right, so I need to figure out what is for dinner tonight. I think I'm gonna use ground beef tonight. I have a lot of black beans in here. I think I have several cans of black beans. So I'm gonna need to use some of these tonight. So this is what I'm thinking. Okay, ground beef. Um, hold on, I'm not done thinking yet. <laughs> Let me see what pastas are in here. I have orzo back here. Um, I have rotini, some pad thai noodles. Okay, so it's been a while since I've made this and actually this might be the perfect night to make this. It's like a cheeseburger pasta. So if I do the ground beef with pasta, beans, and then I have tomato, perfect, tomatoes right here. I can do like ketchup. I know it sounds very odd, like ketchup and then like Dijon mustard, but it's really, really good. And I have cheddar cheese in my fridge. So I think this is something that I'm gonna do. Wow, I have two boxes of rotini. Okay. But like I said, I need to clearly clean out my pantry and use everything that I have in here. So let's start off with this stuff and see what else I can use in here. So I don't really know what I'm calling this. I think in the ultimate cheeseburger casserole maybe. So this is what I have. I have some onions, some garlic, mushrooms from that last Costco haul. So I'm gonna top it off with some pickles. Now my husband says to get rid of the black beans, but I'm trying to clean up my pantry. That's the whole point of this video. We'll see. But I will add some diced tomatoes, some ketchup, some Dijon, and then I am gonna add in some spinach to the casserole and then some uh, pasta. And then I believe I have some uh, cheddar cheese in the fridge that I can grade to top it off. So I'm gonna see where this goes. Let's just call it the ultimate cheeseburger casserole. So this recipe is a play off of a skinny taste recipe I found many years ago, but what makes it the ultimate cheeseburger casserole is the addition of mushrooms. Adding some caramelized mushrooms to this dish really helps bulk up the casserole while adding some great nutrients to this meal. Also, one ingredient I totally forgot to add, which I'll do next time, is bacon. Fry up some bacon, cut it into bite-sized pieces, and top it off at the end before serving. It would add the best crunch to this casserole. So it's essentially like a deconstructed mushroom burger that you would order at a restaurant, but it gives you great leftovers for the next day. Like it is, like it is, and open my heart like you're fearless. Still on the go, you can get, you can get. Show me your love, leave me breathless, breathless. This grease slash fat trick I've been using for many years now has worked well for us. What I do is I always keep a Starbucks cup in our freezer and I will always put like the bacon grease or any grease or fat that comes off of meat and I will put it in that venti sized Starbucks cup freeze it and then once it's filled i will throw the whole thing away i find this is the easiest thing for us instead of just putting it like in a coffee mug letting it cool and then dumping it it's just a lot quicker and faster you're watching me like you want me but you still hold this sounds very very odd but adding some pickles is so good now you don't add this until the very end when you're about to serve it but it gives this perfect tanginess and crunchiness to your casserole which is why i also suggest getting bacon i think both of those elements to this dish would be so so good You're fearless Steal all the gold You can get, you can get Show me your love And leave me breathless, breathless Honestly, 
this is a great clean out meal because you can use literally whatever you have in your pantry or your fridge to just dump into this meal. Whatever you would normally have on a burger, just put it into this casserole. It is seriously the best and easiest way to use up a bunch of ingredients. My husband added a great idea and I, he didn't tell me until the very end, but we got back in our last Trader Joe's haul, some Magnificence is what you put like on a burger. I think it's just kind of like a Thousand Island blend. This would have been so good baked into it, like just to give it a creamy element. So if you have like a Thousand Island or even this sauce, definitely add this to your meat mixture. For tonight's dinner, I'm gonna be making like an enchilada chicken black bean skillet dish I guess you could say and so I'm gonna make my own enchilada sauce I pulled this out of the pantry and then I pulled the, the tomato sauce out so I'm gonna make my own I have a video of how I make my enchilada sauce I will link that right here for you and I'll also link it down below that's the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna make enchilada sauce. Alright I have my enchilada sauce simmering up here on the stove top it just seems like maybe five more minutes my goodness, I have a future little cook down here that is not really helping me whatsoever. So now I'm gonna get started on the chicken back there. I always forget that in the Instant Pot, I can put the chicken frozen in. I don't know why I just defrost it, but whatever. So now I'm gonna cook the chicken in the Instant Pot. And I have four chicken breasts in my Instant Pot with that little trivet, about a cup of water, and I'm gonna season right now with onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And because one of them is a little frozen still I'm gonna do this for about 11 minutes on high I believe and then I'm just gonna shred the chicken do whatever it is you need to do to shred chicken whether that's poaching then shred it roasting and shredding it I'm instapotting and shredding it many of you know this trick already but and just in case you don't the best way to shred chicken is to stick it into your KitchenAid your standing mixer it is much quicker and easier to do it this way rather than just using the fork method but my mixer is in our laundry room because whenever we redid our laundry room we reorganized it because I wanted to clean off all of the counter tops in my kitchen so I was just being lazy I did not want to bring my mixer down but there's that tip just in case you need it. So this meal is actually inspired from the salsa verde chicken enchilada skillet that I found several months ago. It is such a good recipe. I will link the what's for dinner video right here because of how delicious and easy it is. So instead of using salsa verde, I am just using a red enchilada sauce. And what I do to modify that recipe is I like to add in some cream cheese to the mix just to make it a lot creamier and not as spicy so that all of the family can enjoy it. Normally, the recipe calls for sticking this in the oven in the broiler just to let the cheese melt, but I did not want to turn my oven on, so what I did instead was I put the lid on it and I kept it on really low heat so that the heat just stayed in and it melted the cheese that way. But if you're looking for like a nice like crispy caramelized cheese, then definitely stick this in the broiler for about five minutes. I know this isn't a what's for dinner video, but we were doing table topic that night and I thought I would ask you guys the same. If you could spend the weekend in any city, which would you choose? Please leave me a comment down below with your answer. This recipe came at the most perfect time. I was actually looking for a shrimp pasta recipe because I had a lot of pasta in my pantry and Half Baked Harvest came out with a recipe like a few days ago of this recipe I posted right here and I have everything. She makes her own pesto, but I'm just using this. I found that in the pantry. I have coconut milk left over in the pantry, and this is all of our vegetables that's left. So I'm just going to make like a little stir fry of broccoli and zucchini, and I've, I've used up so much of my food already, so I'm gonna start making this. 
Shrimp is one of my favorite proteins to keep in the freezer just because it can stay good for a very long time. And if you are in a rush, in a pinch, and you are like, I did not pull out any type of meat to make for dinner, shrimp defrosts so, so fast. I love to make chipotle shrimp tacos. I love shrimp pasta or like shrimp pasta bakes even. So shrimp can be used so many ways. You could even like dice it up for tacos for kids and stuff instead of just keeping them whole, which I do for the kids all the time. So shrimp is something I will always keep in my freezer. Now she does not have spinach in this dish. I decided to do that on my own because I think it's such a great way to incorporate more greens into my children's and mine diet. So just adding whatever kind of greens you have, arugula would be great with this too. And this recipe was definitely a winner. I am gonna be keeping this in the rotation because I always like to try different recipes all the time to see what my kids like and they really enjoyed this one. So I was on Pinterest trying to get some ideas of what I can make with ground beef and hopefully I have some of the things um, in my pantry. So Swedish meatballs, I know they don't take a lot of ingredients. So this particular recipe, I'm gonna need like panko breadcrumbs and spices and beef broth. And I always have heavy cream on hand and same with Dijon, that's always in my um, fridge or my pantry. So let's go over there. Beef broth. One can of beef broth right there, perfect. Usually with Swedish meatballs, you can do mashed potatoes or egg noodles. Now I know I don't have egg noodles because I have not bought any in a long, long time. I know I don't have them because I usually buy them and then like use them immediately. So let me see if there's something else. Okay, these I can probably use. I bought this a long time ago. I was supposed to use this like in a chicken noodle soup, I believe. Now these aren't like your regular egg noodles. These are kind of like home style egg noodles. So these, I don't know, let's try, let's give these a try. This, I mean, it doesn't hurt. It, it is what it is, that's what I have on hand. This is a pantry clean out, let's clean the pantry out. I'm gonna take one more look at the recipe. I need Worcestershire and I don't have any in my fridge. Luckily I do have one in my pantry and I also need to get while I'm over here is some panko breadcrumbs or regular bre breadcrumbs. I do have regular, but I'm gonna use panko because I rarely get to use panko. So we're gonna be using this. So here's basically all I need for this Swedish meatball dish. Um, I think I just need olive oil and butter as well. So let's get the Swedish meatball recipe underway. So this is a major spoiler alert. I'm getting ahead of myself, but my husband really enjoyed these noodles. Like he is requesting these types of noodles instead of the regular egg noodles from now on. I, to be honest, I don't even remember where I got these. I don't know if these were a Trader Joe's find or I don't, I don't know. I don't know where these are from. So I'm going to have to find them and stock up on them because he really, really enjoyed them. So I have another tip for you, and that tip is to wet your hands with cold water before you roll the meatballs. Sometimes the, the meat will kind of like melt into your hands a little bit and it gets really sticky, but when your hands are cold with cold water, it prevents the meat from sticking to your hands. So I definitely recommend doing that before you start rolling out meatballs. Secret to a really good like roux sauce whenever you melt butter and add flour to create a roux sauce you really want to make sure you cook the flour because if you do not properly cook that flour it's gonna taste like chalky and really really nasty so really let that flour cook down for several minutes before you do anything else
side I have my gravy coming to a simmer right now. So I'm gonna add in the meatballs back in to warm through. I have the egg noodles, the very strange looking homestyle egg noodles boiling right now. I still have some time on that. And then back here I'm gonna get some vegetables going. I had these in the fridge. I bought these um, several days ago from Target. I did like a really quick Target pickup order of just vegetables and fruit and milk and stuff. So I'm gonna just use the rest of this stuff just so I don't waste it. This is looking pretty good. These will be done by the time the noodles are done. So everything's coming together. I have about five minutes left. All right, dinner is ready. Here's the meatballs. They smell really, really good. And here's the noodles. I really hope that they turn out well. They look good. Oops, I dropped some. So I'm gonna serve this up. And this dish was another big winner. This one is so easy to make because I always have all these ingredients on hand. But I really love how with Swedish meatballs you add in like spice, like the nutmeg and the allspice. I think it just makes this dish so unique and so flavorful. So as I was looking through my pantry to figure out what else I can make for dinner, I ran into these guys. Do you guys remember these from a Winco haul I did months ago? Totally forgot about them, so I definitely need to try them. So I have some chicken that I'm going to kind of cube up into nugget size pieces. So I know a lot of recipes call for brining the chicken in pickle juice, and I've done that before, and it really doesn't make a difference for me. So I'm just gonna do a brine in milk, and I found a recipe that does a brine in milk and eggs. So I'm gonna try to do that first. Let's do that, and, and then I found some sweet potato fries in the freezer. So we're kind of doing just a whole clean out of everything. So let's start cooking. Lazy girl hack. I did not want to whisk the eggs and the milk in a bowl. So instead I cracked the eggs directly into the Ziploc bag and I poured the milk into the bag and I just kind of used my hands to massage it. There was no need to dirty another dish. So I have my cubed chicken right here that I just cut up. I'm going to put it into the milk and egg brine and then I'm going to let it sit in the fridge for about 20 minutes. So now I have some of my ingredients for the breading. So I am going to do breadcrumbs. I have powdered sugar. I need to get some of the spices down. But I like doing this in a pie dish. I just think it makes dredging the chicken a lot easier than like a cereal bowl. I love when a recipe calls for white pepper because I rarely get to use it. The only time I really use this is whenever I make like a homemade mac and cheese. This just brings like a much more like tangy flavor to it. So I'm excited to try it in these nuggets. For my Brussels sprouts, I generally use honey on top, but I just seen a video of somebody using maple syrup on Brussels sprouts. Uh, yeah, that is happening tonight. I'm gonna give that a try. It sounds scrumptralacent. Does anyone know where that word comes from? Oh my gosh, if you know where that word comes from, we have to be best friends. Like, for real, we have to be. Okay, continuing on. 
For real, though, if you really do know where that is from, you've got to mention it in the comments. Oh my gosh, I love, love, love where that comes from. But anyway, I need to mention this electric skillet because this is one of the kitchen tools I think everyone should have in their home. It's able to cook a lot of things very quickly, and I've had this one for so many years now. I just, I just love my electric skillet so, so much. Try adding maple syrup next time you make Brussels sprouts, but I actually suggest probably roasting these so that you get a better caramelization on the syrup, on the sugar from the syrup. So I am definitely gonna try that next time. And it was so delicious this time around, pan frying it, but I think roasting will just take it up another level. I will look at you and tell you that I'm all right, like a and the winner between the two sauces was definitely the Polynesian sauce. It tasted exactly like the Chick-fil-A sauce, but the regular sauce, to me, there wasn't really much of a flavor to it. So definitely get the Polynesian if you see it. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this different type of video. It was not very thought out. It was literally just trying to look in my pantry, see what I had available, and then kind of going from there. So if you guys like this type of video, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below to let me know that you enjoyed this type of video so that I can make them in the future. And please subscribe. I would really, really appreciate the support. And we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.